this conference in Oxford is very important for me because uh, in preparation of what finally will be published by IPCC next year, uh, well, in 2018, uh, I think uh, what the policymakers need is to know if this is just an aspiration or a, is there any pathways to get there and to begin to really work with the metrics. It's surprising the point where finally policymakers don't master these metrics. So even say low carbon or it doesn't mean it's really something concrete. That's why it's so much needed to really put numbers and scenarios and pathways. And um, so that's very important. The second element is because the scientific community could send a message of it's, of course it's difficult, very, very difficult because we are very, very late, uh, that it is unachievable. And this, I think, message has to be conveyed in a way this has to be done and how to do it in a more positive way. And that's why this discussion in the conference are important between policymakers, economists, poli political scientists, and the scientific community per se of the physics of climate, uh, really to gather, because to gather a message that can be listened to by the policymakers and by the public. So this 1.5 report is extremely important. And, um, it should think how difficult the task is, yes, but how we can address it and how much time we have to do it. And that is, in my view, a very important message. And we should depoliticize these matches as much as we can. It should not be a negotiation around that. So that's why I'm happy to be here. We learn from the 10 or 15 past years that the, the, image, the image, imagination of the catastrophe was finally not so effective in pushing government, citizen, whoever to act if they don't see the window of action. So they, the scientist has to be very clear on the reality, the reality check that where we are, where the carbon budget which is left how much we have to pick by 2020, which is still not in the mindset of many, many governments. And, uh, and how, how sharp the decrease should be after. So they have to communicate their very solid scientific understanding with now the best hypothesis they do on the modeling. But at the same time, they can offer the different ways and how you, in a way, you get a concrete a concrete approach to that. You know, if not, it's big numbers. These big numbers seems very difficult. You have just, just talk about decarbonization doesn't mean a lot. It's a reality. But then how you do that, like how you do that in transport? What does it take? What does it take to, with the land use, the forest, with the agriculture? What does it take for energy? Uh, all this, I think, should be explained. If not, it's just like, a catastrophe, you don't even know how to address it. Second, I think that's very important that the impacts are more, more and more clearly understood. It's make a difference from 1.5 to 2 degrees and of course and beyond. Uh, in the previous months before Paris, there was still some governments that were thinking, we cannot do the 2 degrees C. It's too, too difficult. So why don't we finally agree on 2.5? The scientific community has a responsibility to show that there is an immense difference between 2.5 to 1.5, and that the costs, uh, impacts, and in a way the opportunities and the value to do it, it's always perceived as a negative thing to be so stringent on emission reduction. But if you feel that it is just a new way of life, a new way of technology, uh, new initiative, many, many positive elements. So that's the positive elements I was, not the positive metrics. The metrics has to be the metrics. I think we can do much more on uh, agriculture practices and the way agriculture could contribute positively uh, and even for food security together. I think we need much more research on that. And it has been rather neglected. 
I do think that on mobility we can do a lot more, that we could be much more imaginative. Um, and of course, of course, on this negative emission issue, I think we should not lose time. We know already how to extract CO2 from the atmosphere. Uh, how much we know how, what to do with it, to store it. Uh, and finally, I think we have now vision of how the clean energy system can work. But we don't have the package, the storage plus the grid plus, and, and we have to be much more sophisticated in the, the package of innovation that has to go together. So that's on the technology, but on the fundamental science, I think we need much more understanding of the specific impacts at very local level. And uh, of course, this mystery of negative emission, we have to work Me on that. Too. Mm, that's a very important point. That's why, again, when I was thinking, that's very important the way the scientific community craft the message for the 1.5 exactly on that negative emission. If you just say, we will have to do negative emission by such and such year, mm -hmm. uh, you have to say at the same time, we don't know how to do it. And anyway, we have to do enormous amount of things before on the emission reduction per se. And so that's very important, just not to say that's the result of the modeling is there is so many gigaton to get out, and then we call this negative emission. So because that's an arithmetic result, it's not a substantive result itself. So that's why science has go to go into details, mm -hmm. explaining what all it means. And to know, of course, for the moment, we don't know exactly. We can't just extract so much tons of CO2 and do something with it. It's n we don't know it. So that's, I think, important. And I think the message that Naki was referring to on geoengineering, there is such uncertainty on that and risk attached to that, that it would be crazy where there is much less uncertainty on clean energy and clean transport, where we know now even the cost. That just to say we'll do something, we don't know, we don't know the risk and we don't know the cost. That, so that's a very important message, I think, I would hope to see in this report as well.